Has the time come for Prince William's return to royal duties? That is the question on everyone's lips. The whispers among the royal correspondents, those tireless chroniclers of regal happenings, hint at a comeback for the Prince of Wales towards the end of next week. There's an anticipatory atmosphere, a brewing excitement, that can only be likened to the clinking of teacups before a grand announcement. The royal carousel is set to whirl again, and the public can't help but be drawn into its mesmerizing rotation. It's a captivating dance of duty, tradition, and public life that has always defined the British monarchy. The eyes of the world are now eagerly set on the venerable palace of Kensington, a fortress of discretion, known for doling out morsels of information with regal restraint. As the palace maintains its stoic stance, the public's curiosity only grows. What does Prince William's return mean? How will it unfold? Only time will tell, the narrative spun by the Sun's royal editor paints a picture of domestic devotion. In the heart of the Kensington Palace, a beacon of regal discretion, Prince William is seen embracing the role of the doting husband and father. His royal diary is as clear as a summer's day, his attention unwavering, standing by the Princess of Wales's side, his dedication to his family shining through. It's a heartwarming tableau that reveals a man who, despite his royal lineage and responsibilities, is first and foremost, a husband and father. His life is a testament to the fact that even amidst the regal duties that beckon, love and family always take precedence. Yet, even as this domestic picture unfolds, whispers among royal correspondents are beginning to stir. They suggest a shift in the current narrative, an impending change in the royal rhythm. Could it be that Prince William is preparing to step back into the limelight? Yet, whispers suggest a return to the public stage for Prince William is on the horizon. In the hallowed halls of the Daily Mail, the plot thickens. Rebecca English, with her well-placed whispers and subtle hints, has set the royal grapevine abuzz. The suggestion is that the firm, that steadfast bastion of tradition and continuity, is ready to resume its rhythm. The Prince of Wales, it seems, is shedding his familial cocoon, poised to re-emerge on the public stage. Yet, amidst this flurry of anticipation, there's a more somber note. King Charles, the nation's sovereign, remains in convalescence. The timelines of his recovery shift like Quicksilver, a story that's more of a tale told in whispers than a narrative set in stone. His recuperation, whether in the comforting embrace of Clarence House, Windsor, or perhaps Highgrove, is shrouded in a gentle mystery. The public yearns for a glimpse of their sovereign, a reassuring nod that all is well. Yet, the royal doors remain respectfully closed, the king's health a private matter to be handled with utmost discretion. The nation waits, teacups in hand, eyes locked on the palace gates, for a sign, a statement, a mere hint of their king's well-being. But, as in all things royal, patience is key. The royal narrative is a slow dance, a waltz that plays out over days and weeks, not hours. There's a rhythm to it, a cadence that demands respect and understanding. Patience, it seems, must be the watchword. As for the Prince of Wales, should he indeed grace the public eye by week's end, one can only envisage the spectacle. A return steeped in tradition, perhaps. A photo op, replete with a hard hat, to underscore his commitment to his people or a symbolic gesture, a nod to his wife's well-being, keeping the domestic narrative alive. And how might this spectacle play out in the royalist press? They've been starved for a royal narrative, their pages filled with whispers and hints. Will they seize upon this return, spin tales of a prince reborn from his familial cocoon, ready to step back onto the public stage? Or could it be that this return is but a brief interlude, a pause before the next act in the royal drama? A tantalizing morsel to whet the public's appetite for the next royal reveal. Will this tableau soothe the simmering undercurrents within the royalist press, or merely serve as a prelude to the next chapter in the never-ending royal narrative?